Mo. What? Mo. What? Why are you fighting with best boy Ben Saint? Why are you doing this to me? Because it was funny. Because I was just trolling him a little bit. Because, all right, I, if you... Uh, I'll tell you exactly like I told Robin, right? If you end a tweet with <laughs> unfollowed, you're obviously trolling them, right? Because, like, I, I don't actually mean that. And I'll, I'll go back and, and follow him again later on. Because I was just trying to, like, just fuck with him a little bit. But then, like, it it didn't really... He he issued a wah, 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 wah fucking uh, uh, thing. And then his fucking... Womp, womp. And then his fucking uh, Twitter followers chimed in a little bit. I was like, uh, this is weak sauce. And quite frankly... <laughs> you got ganged up on by the fucking Saint Squad. Like, oh, yes, because they needed fucking praise from their lord from up on high. So he can dole out fucking hearts and likes and retweets as much as he wants to. Look, look, I feel I feel <laughs> uncomfortable in this podcast because you've upset Ben Saint. Ben Saint is my Lord and Savior. Are you are you fishing for compliments and likes and all that from him? <laughs> of course. All the likes from Ben Saint. The, the more <laughs> likes from Ben Saint, the better. I will tell you what. I get likes from Monkey every once in a while, and it makes me feel tell good. Tell you what, tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you a deal, okay? For every like Ben Saint or Monkey Jones gives you, I'll give you three more from them. I mean, that's probably what the going rate is already. Oh, three to one? I mean, like, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and take that. I'll go ahead and take that. I mean, I think I've gotten, no, maybe for Mumkey, for Ben, I think I've gotten, like, two likes total. Mumkey, every once in a while, I'll come up with a somewhat funny reply to one of his tweets, and he'll like it. Because <laughs> you're underage. I'm, I mean, <laughs> shut up. I made a tweet. It was um, when Biggs, uh, Mumkey's Let's Play partner and close friend, made a Discord server, and I had joined it, and I had talked to a Biggs a couple times before, so he made me a mod. And all the mods were talking to the channel, so I got to talk to Biggs. I had tweeted out something like, I got to talk to Biggs yesterday, and I confirmed that the rumors are true. He's a very nice and cool guy. And Monkey just responds, no. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right, you, you scallywag. Let's go ahead and start the show. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Hey everybody, how you doing? What's up? Welcome and all that stuff. This, doing great. This, <laughs> this is the MoCast. <laughs> Welcome to the MoCast. I am your host, Mo Diggity. And joining me today are my two co-hosts, Robin, say hello. Hello. And Riley, say hello. Uh, hello. Now normally I preface uh, their introductions with something like, you know, my favorite or the number one or anything, but... I've been practicing my introduction. I've been practicing these intros, uh, this intro specifically. And I think I pulled it off pretty well. So we'll go ahead and just stick with that, me hearty. Uh, and to, it makes me sad that you're not calling us the best and great anymore. Uh, well, you'll you'll just have to, you know, you know, life. No, we are life, the best co-hosts to the universe, life, and you have life's to. Life's a garden. You gotta dig it. Appreciate that. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You are the yeah, yeah, you are the bestest you are the bestest co hostesses in the universe. And that's why we're Thank you, Bo. Yes, and that's why we're talking about the MCU today. Primarily the movies, because I know that most of y'all who are listening probably didn't read that many comics, though I could be wrong. But we probably will be talking about comics a lot too, because like if it's the MCU we're just gonna talk about it. As much as we possibly can, but we're primarily going. I've to talk only about watched this. like recaps of the comics. There's some dude called Comic Storian who does like full recaps of Marvel comics, and I've watched a couple of those. Uh, yeah, I absolutely love his shit. Like, I was really fearful for his channel after uh, Coppa was going to be a thing, and uh, I was kind of freaking out that that was going to negatively affect his channel because he plays it really straight laced. He doesn't swear. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't really tackle controversial quote unquote subjects. Uh, you know, he's a pretty good guy, and he's a former vet. So you know, or he's he's a former soldier. I shouldn't say former vet. You can't really get veteran status. <laughs> How do you become not a veteran? It was anymore? like, well, I was well, you die. like, well, I <laughs> well, dying is one way of doing it. 
<laughs> you know, like you, you can't go, well, I experienced war and uh, then I didn't. So I guess I'm not anymore. You know, <laughs> that would be fucking nuts. If a veteran gets amnesia, are they still a veteran? Well, yeah, but then they're just a veteran with amnesia. <laughs> True. <laughs> See, you could stack you could stack yeah, stuff on top the of each other. one comic thing with comic story and the one like comic storyline that I like actually like watched the whole thing of was fucking Gwenpool because that was a very interesting storyline to me. So like I watched all the videos about it. Yeah. They Gwenpool movie, make it happen. MCU. I'm almost MCU. I'm, I'm almost really into the 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 Gwenpool thing, but I don't know. Like, uh, they, they, Marvel has a way of just absolutely fucking up, uh, women, uh, women characters. Like, it's like you you can get like women to write them in Marvel. I, I think it's just the Marvel fucking curse. I I, I don't know if, if all of them like even if, if they can even. Uh, write a women's character without being kind of stupid. They wrote Captain Marvel great. That was a great movie. I love that movie. <laughs> uh, I still, you know, it's I still have not a joke. I'm not being ironic. I love that movie. You know, I, I still haven't seen uh, Captain Marvel yet. I've been wanting to, I kind of been wanting to see it, but like, then again, I don't really like, you know, I, I don't like it when actors or directors freaking talk down to people, like, the entire audience, because, you know, if they would just always preface stuff with, like, hey, this is who I'm talking to, but, like, as we've seen with Ryan Johnson, there's no prefacing or anything, there's no, oh, well, excuse me, but uh, what I meant to say was, blah, like, no, it's like, fuck you, and I'm like, I'm, I'm sick of this, like, new era of snarkiness, from these people, and I guess that's really affected how, like, I view uh, Brie Larson and, and Captain Marvel, though it does look cool, and I'll be totally honest, I was kind of hyped a little bit when I saw the uh, the, the trailer for it, because I, I like fucking over, o overpowered superhero movies. That's why I so, love the shit out, hold on, that's why I love the yeah. shit out of Shazam, and that's probably one of the very few decent things that uh, DC, uh, the DC films has pumped out that isn't animated. Anyway, go so ahead. Suicide Squad was all right. Um, I thought it was fucking trash, man. Like I was so pissed off and disappointed. Like so, I, I, I knew I've it was. Heard of the comics. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go on your Suicide right. Squad. Rant. No, no, no. Well, no, it'll just be a mini little rant. Uh, <laughs> I, I knew that. I, I knew that it was going to be a little hokey. And, and like it had color, it like you could tell by the logo coloring and all that stuff, and the, uh, uh, the the then rumors of we have to do reshoots. It didn't do well with the test audience, and I'm thinking, oh god, because you know, the death of a lot of movies starts with the test audience didn't like them. And I'm like, oh fuck, and that's kind of what I think happened with Suicide Squad, that the test audience got to. Uh, or or the studio. Sometimes it's mostly a combination of both. But uh, Riley, go ahead. And, and uh, after that, we'll uh, get Robin's hot take on. All right. So, two little things. One funny thing, and one question for Mo about the comics. So, when Captain Marvel first came out, I was looking at like all the media buzz behind it, and one like news story that particularly like got me into a fucking giggling fit when I first saw like the article. I don't know if this is real. I have to assume it's not real because it seems like the most sexist thing in the world. But it was, <laughs> <laughs> but it was an article that I found that re report reportedly for Captain Marvel, I don't know if it was like something with the stunt double just happening to have ass shots, but like they claimed that Brie Larson had a butt double in uh, Captain Marvel. <laughs> I actually can confirm I think that was a real thing because that there, was real? there there are shot there are side by side comparison shots of Brie Larson's butt and allegedly uh, the stunt double's butt. Now, more than likely, well, possibly I should say, not maybe more than likely, uh, there's a possibility that all this shit was just photoshopped because I can photoshop you a nice ass on on Brie Larson. That that won't wouldn't be too hard. 
you know, all you got to do is just click this and do that, and then boom, you got a booty. But, uh, uh, th- it this could also was... just be that, like, the ass shots in question are, like, also scenes with stunts in them, so it just happened that the stunt double had a better ass. Well, yeah, that there's no filters and no good lighting and all that stuff, so it, it could be that, but, and, and no pun intended, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ooh, I know, I know, I know. Fuck all of you. <laughs> uh, however, funny uh, laughed. Yes, however, uh, I, I think that was confirmed to be a real thing and a real shot. All right, oh so, uh, Robin, what, what are your what, what's? Uh, let's but I go still ahead had a question start. about the comics. You forgot oh, I, about my question. Oh, I, I thought that was the question. Two things. No. I said oh. about the comics. The ass double has nothing to do with the comments. Oh, my the bad. Comics. You got hey, you got me thinking about booty. My bad. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> booty on the brain. Uh, <laughs> booty on the brain. So right, go, go ahead. In the, is it true? Because I've like heard conflicting things. Later. I've never really actually went and like Googled shit. So this is probably an easy Google answer. But in the comics, isn't Captain Marvel a dude, and then there's, like, Miss Marvel, who's a different character, who's a woman? Yeah, it's another thing that the fucking MCU fucked up. Uh, this is what I can't fucking stand about shit, is, like, you have, like, even though the women characters are fucking goofy, uh, th- there's a ton of them that are fucking awesome. Like, even though I think Storm is written a little goofy, or even Psylocke is written a little goofy, you know... They're still awesome characters, and they have a ton of them to choose. You know, they they can pick and choose easily, but uh, at, at the end of the day, Captain Mar. Well, you know, I've never really been that huge a fan of the comic, so I, I know that it was a dude at the very beginning, but uh, I know that they transitioned from a uh, male. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, fuck. Uh, oh, oh, my, 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 my bad. My bad. Fuck. That, that sounded. Marvel sorry. That that sounded. That that sounded much better. In my well, can head. I God can damn. I correct you guys real quick? Because I mean, uh, they, the, they went the from... Captain Marvel you're thinking of is the Captain Marvel from DC, uh, Shazam. Oh fuck! Are we thinking about that Captain Marvel? <laughs> you're thinking oh, about Shazam. Shit. Oh fuck. See that that's another thing about goddamn comic books is that everyone fucking steals from one another and then you fucking go and make some fucking goof like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I god damn it. Jesus. This fucking podcast, I, I swear to fucking God. <laughs> uh but yeah, okay, the, the, you have uh, someone here that actually knows about comics, so it's alright. You're good, 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 because you <laughs> know I the comic story in on the mocats. Uh, you know I, I actually would be totally down to do that. Uh but anyway. Uh yeah 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 it, it was it was a male and then they kicked down the role uh, or the rank I think uh, to to uh, uh the the current female uh the the chick that Brie Larson's playing and it's kind of cool because like the the good thing about having her in the MCU and the in the Marvel universe right now and the thing that was great about we know Mo like, it's booty. Well, besides booty, besides booty, and you know what? I'm one of those rare dudes who like. I like the short haircut on her. I think she looks very pretty with it. I think she does it very uh, well. I didn't like the short haircut. She I like short haired like, chicks. I really she looks do. Good I think with the long hair. Yeah, she looks good with the long hair too. But you know, like I've never you know, been the, into short haired chicks. Like short hair is like a complete turn off for me. I don't think it is. Like you know, a lot of them. Like I, I think a lot of women can really, really pull off the the short hair uh, look. They very exist, well. and, but they're and, rare for me. And I, I, I think that she she does it really well. But yeah, because a lot of people gave her shit uh, for that. Because of course, everyone thinks you know, like LGBT and all that. And like you know, you people could just look at it as a style instead what of mean just people. Oh, the, the the fucking scumbags on fucking Twitter and social media who always associate uh, uh, something uh, with with something else, and really all it is is just a fucking fashion statement. 
there's no need to get your like under your uh, your little bigoted or intolerant undertones associated with it, and and that's like always a fucking bummer because you can never just talk about comics without shit getting inherently a uh, uh, social or political, which is it's it's not the worst thing, I guess. Well, everything's political. Every well, everything I think can be political. Uh, I mean, well, I, I suppose you. I suppose you know what? That's a podcast uh, episode all into itself because, like, I haven't figured anything out. As well, I haven't figured out whether or not I believe one hundred percent if everything can be or is political or not. But anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, 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 fuck, I I kind of got off my uh, chain. You know, Robin, uh, why why don't you go ahead and. Uh, uh, since I think I answered your question, it, it was a, it was a rank kick down to uh, the current character right now. Oh yeah, fuck! I, I remember the point I was making. Uh, the cool thing about Infinity War is that they start going off into other uh, planets and uh, into other uh, 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 solar systems, right? And so now we finally have something that isn't exactly confined to Earth or to the magic realm. Uh, and now we have, like, an expanded universe. And so I'm really jazzed when they finally do inevitably bring in Beta Ray Bill into the Thor universe. Because I'm looking forward to introducing more aliens and, and stuff and other races. That's uh, very progressive it, of you. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, hey, I, I'll talk to a scroll or one of the Shia. Uh, uh, Shia? Who, who are they fighting? I think that was sort of a, a not an allegory, but a stand-in for uh, the Palestinian uh, uh, Israeli conflict that's constantly going on in the Middle East. Uh, oh, the scroll and the uh, the the she is it the fucking Shia? You know, I I I don't know. It's a uh, yeah. It's the Shia. Yeah. Shia. Thank race. you. Thank you. I because there there was a. Uh, there was a lot of uh, uh there there of course are political stand-ins because there's like the Shi'ar, day. the the Skrull, and the the Kree. There and we some go. Other smaller, like uh, like uh, spatial empires and things. Yeah, the, the, you know the Kree Empire storyline in 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 the uh, the comics is really really cool because uh, if you watched uh, Mar- uh, Marvel's uh, Agents of Shield. They're uh they're really Cree heavy. I don't think they've had any scrolls on the show yet. Uh, but I'm I'm really really looking forward to seeing if uh, when uh, the Marvel universe introduces the uh, scroll uh, uh race in there because they're shape shifters. Like anyone who knows their Fantastic Four history knows that uh the Human Torch uh, got married to a scroll woman. And then it turned out that she was a spy for the Scroll Empire. Scroll, 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 scroll. <laughs> Who owns Fantastic Four? Uh, Probably so Disney now at this point, right? Well, it was owned by Fox, and, and Fox that's was Disney, bought right? by Disney, and so Disney yeah. essentially owns Fantastic Four. Uh, Reboot it. Get it back. We need it. Oh, I don't know. Man. I don't. I don't know. Uh, like in in my opinion. They had three attempts to get it right, and, like, they only had, like, a decent one attempt. I think the first Fantastic Four movie wasn't that bad. Like, it, it, they, were it was all, a little, they were all pretty bad. I think it was just slightly lackluster, but... Uh, and that's a fucking shame. The, the Fantastic Four comics are so good. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely awesome. And I think the thing that really sunk uh, the Fantastic Four movies was, like, no one knew how to write them. Like, you can really tell who reads comic books in the industry and who doesn't by, like, say, like, compare the, the Wolverine series to the Fantastic Four series. Even, like, the, the, the X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, I mean, they, they had, it was a lot more comic book influenced than Fantastic Four. And this is with Deadpool slash Baraka. Uh, in there, which was which was never in there to begin with, like I I don't know who came up with this character, who who thought that maybe this is a good idea, but it's probably the dumbest thing I, I think I've ever seen was Deadpool Baraka, but anyway, uh, 
yeah, Fantastic Four, no one really knew uh, the directors and the producers and whoever was in charge of that movie. They did not know how to handle a superhero team that wasn't just the X-Men. Because the X-Men and Brian Singer and all that, they have teams of people who are probably comic book nerds, even though the X-Men movies that, uh, from from 3 and onward have been utter garbage. I mean, the, I, the I, cool I thing is all of these movies are introducing uh, like comic franchises that like the mainstream audiences have never heard of, like fucking Guardians of the Galaxy and shit. Like, no, like nobody knew who the Guardians of the Galaxy were, like unless you read comics, right? Yeah, I, I but was now a they're huge like fan. one of the biggest of the MCU franchises. <laughs> and I'm so happy because I love the shit out of the Guardians uh, uh, movies. Like uh, all of them, and that's that's why I love Infinity War so much, is because it has Guardians of the Galaxy in there. I, I think like they picked uh, perfectly uh, all the people who were involved in that. E- even uh, Bautista, who like I'm not huge, so good. like I'm not the biggest fan of wrestlers as actors. Even though if the if we didn't cast wrestlers as actors, we wouldn't have a uh, what was it? They live with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Where he has to, where he uh, wears the sunglasses, and that's how he gets to see like be uh, beyond the facade, and you find out that everything's ran by aliens and shit. Like I, I love the hell out of that movie. Oh yeah, I was just thinking about that movie the other day. Oh yeah, that's a that's a fantastic movie. If like you have some tin foil on your head, that that's going to exacerbate the situation. I think, man, because like. I watched that and Wag the Dog uh, one night back to back, and I I fucking couldn't sleep. I didn't trust anybody. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but, like, the, the JQ heroes use that to like justify their position, but don't realize that it's actually like completely antithetical to <laughs> to like JQing. It, it's literally a stand-in for whatever you want. And those types, they 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 take that so absolutely too far, uh, to the whatever extreme they're going, it just drives me absolutely nuts. Because like you know, when people do that, they they make it shitty to talk about this stuff in public, because if it gets too prevalent and too uh, too if we get too comfortable, uh, uh, then people associate that with something terrible. And, and like that, that sucks because I want to talk about everything. And unfortunately, comics and video games and uh, like fun niche medias that are going mainstream now, well, have been going mainstream for a while. But with with the uh, uh, growing comes growing pains, and so now you get the loopy loos and the people who are trying to make a buck, uh, you know, hyping hysteria over this and that. And quite frankly, I don't think anyone really wants to get because that's a long that'll derail the entire thing I think <laughs> but anyway anyway yeah Guardians of the Galaxy uh, absolutely loved it I'm, I'm so glad that uh, this has become acceptable to the point where now um, mainstream audiences are getting exposed to like you said Guardians of the Galaxy and the X-Men it, it does make me happy because I've been reading comics since I was a little kid. Like, uh, comic books and professional wrestling, I think, are, like, two of the things that stuck with me from, like, when I was a kid that were permanent. Well, comic books, wrestling, and video games, I should say. There we go. Everything else, I, I kind of uh, matured as I, 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 as I aged, as I got into it, my advanced age that I'm at now. Uh, but anyway... Uh, I almost think it's, like, similar to uh, how, like, some people, there was, there was a, man, who's, who said it before? It was something in, like, the Gamergate days where they said there was that article that came out that said, like, uh, like the, the gamers don't exist anymore or something. Oh, yeah, and, uh, God. But, but actually the whole point of the, the article that, like, the, the Gamergaters didn't realize was that because gaming is now so prevalent, it's kind of hard to say that like you're a gamer when like everybody plays games. It's just like you're you're like a person. Like th- there's no reason to like separate yourself from other people, you know. 
I, I don't know. I, more like a gamer. Am I right, people? Shut your fucking ass up, Riley, right now! <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the same Shut thing up. I sort of grew with, uh, with, with comic books, where, like, you know, what what is the point of, like, you're not really a nerd anymore, you're just, like, you know, a, a yeah. person. <laughs> Yeah, and and uh, you know, and I mean absolutely no offense to anyone who's listening or, or, or is my co-host right now or anything, because uh, Riley, I don't even know where you stand on a lot of, on a lot of things. Then again, I ha- also have never asked you, so uh, like it, it's it's kind of weird though. The 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 bummer about being mainstream is our fun little niche hobby is now exposed to everyone, and it's it's hard. Not to look at these fucking people and go, I like Wolverine because he has claws. Like, oh, cool. Okay, all right. So you're a Wolverine fan. Hey, what'd you think of that one issue? And, and you're not trying to, like, check them or anything. You're just trying to, like, you know, relate to them and have a conversation. And then they look at you like you just, like, burped in their face. Like, uh, uh, like what? I-, I don't read comic books. That's stupid. And they're like, dude, Nerd. fuck, man. Yeah, and, and then the, the, the then I get wedgied or, or just like my head stuffed in the fucking toilet. You get stuffed <laughs> in a locker. I get stuffed in a locker and, and I'm like I, I I'm now I like I'm forty and I still get stuffed in lockers like I'm 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 like a bitch. You know, and I'm fat as shit now. So now it hurts even worse. Because now I'm like, ah, I've developed claustrophobia because of lock anyway, anyway, that, that all all I just said was bullshit. Anyway, <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, it, it it really sucks to, like, you don't mind sharing, like, your, your hobbies and all that, and you, you want your stuff to grow, because the last thing you want, and, and I think everyone has at least one series that you loved, but because the, the social presence wasn't there, the fan base wasn't there, uh, it got fucking canceled after, like, a season or two. Firefly fans know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. I count myself among the brown coats. But yeah, man, it's. I don't have to worry about that. I'm a Power Rangers fan. It'll fucking never end. Even oh, yeah. if you want it to, it'll never end. <laughs> oh, see, see, yeah, like there, you're lucky because you have a dedicated. Oh wait, uh, you have a dedicated fucking fan base because your 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 thing is like, well, I mean this politely, is super old. And it is like it is established. Maybe old would be the bad, well, not the greatest word at all, but it's more established than the other uh, fan bases. I are. mean, a and lot that's, of that's shit great. Is, Power Rangers came out in 1993, and a lot of shit is older than that. Well, yeah, because Power Rangers is like a, it, it's like a lot of a uh, Japanese to America shows. They they take the video and they just dub over it with uh insert comedic thing here or something like mxc a- anyone who's ever watched most extreme elimination which is probably one of the best shows ever fucking made and like one of the best things to ever come out of japan like there's something that's so great about japan is like the the content they produce like you don't have to like be a part of the mythos or the fan base or anything to enjoy it it can be consumed no matter where you are and but they but they they put their little twist their you know their culture's twist on it, and it's great that 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 uh that feeling remains, and so you're it seems experiencing crazy to so me. like you you oh, oh, okay we'll expand upon that in just a second, but it's like it's, 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 it, it, it's great that there are like people like uh, uh, uh there there are people who can still do that and we can still enjoy their content. I had a whole rant, and I just it, 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 I just noticed that it was going to steer us all the way to fucking comic books. So I'm just not <laughs> like the MXC God in Japanese uh, 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 media and, and uh, uh, content. I, I can like talk for days uh, about that. But Riley, what, what were you? Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, one second, one more thing on the Power Rangers tangent. It seems crazy to me that they can just take like. Foot footage from a show that's like a completely different thing, and like they have their own American actors, their own like completely different American story, and they just weave together this footage from like a completely different thing, and it, and nobody, no like kid who watched it in the nineties even fucking knew. 
like they didn't know they were getting their footage from like a completely fucking different show in a different country. Well, uh, all right, so uh, I have to disagree with you there, just because when the Power Rangers phenomenon was just kicking off, and maybe it's different for you because you're you're much much younger than I am. Uh, uh, th- there was a bunch of like little uh, uh, press junkets and, and and snippets and little like behind the scenes and explaining Power Rangers stuff, because like it, it was that what what happened the Power Rangers thing, like Americans were exposed to I, I think what was it Ultraman. He he yes. was a yeah he was the first big he was the first humanoid uh, 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 thing that fought Godzilla and all the monsters and stuff. Uh, I think he's like kaiju esque, but uh, but anyway, I could be completely wrong on that. I'm also not an expert on like Ultraman and all that stuff, but we were only really exposed to that live action stuff. I think with Ultraman, and uh, when it finally when the Power Rangers came to America, I think the uh, uh, the, the studios felt that that they had some splaining to do, and so they aired a bunch of uh. Well, this is where it comes from, and this is what we're doing, and this is the behind-the-scenes stuff, and this is the history of it. So, like a lot of my generation, when that all stuff, that stuff kicked off, we were exposed to the uh, how the where it came from stuff. Maybe it's it different seems for like it you. Would, it doesn't seem like they'd air that and like show that to kids and stuff because it kind of seems like it'd break the fantasy. Well, like, oh, that guy, that guy who's the Green Ranger, that's not Tommy. That's fucking Ryuke Tanaka from. Well, well, well uh, here's the thing about that, though. Like, when you're watching Rita Repulsa and all of them, the, 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 and what, why is everyone uh, Japanese? You know, <laughs> like, uh, the people were asking, like, they were starting to ask questions, like, why is the voice off sync? You know, they don't speak, sound like they're uh, speaking English, you know, like, if you're into, uh, you would specifically know, uh, like, what to look for if you're a huge fan, like I was, of, uh, uh, Japanese martial arts films, and uh, so like you, you, you're, I guess maybe this is another thing that maybe you're missing out on, like when America was uh, introduced to Jet Li, Bruce Lee, and all all the all those uh, actors from China and Japan. Uh, uh, they they were getting used to the uh, the overdubs, the English dubs over uh, uh, Chinese and Japanese martial arts films, and so the kids were starting to. Uh, Barely get exposed. So bad. Oh, they're, oh, they're they're so bad, but they're so good though. That's another idea for it for an episode is uh, martial arts films. Man, I love the shit out of those. We'll all binge watch uh, uh, Ip Man, Ip Man, and watch number three and watch. Uh, I I I forget who it was. Uh, who, who's the actor? But he fights Mike Tyson, and it's uh. It's boxing. It's American boxing style versus uh, 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 another really hard to pull off obscure martial arts style, and the way that they did it in the movie is absolutely amazing, and the gimmick behind it's really cool too. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a uh, 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 Robin. Or what, what? What do you? What do you think? Or, or, or uh, what's what's your exposure to? Or what? What's a uh, what what's a um, a comic that you're happy turn into a movie that you're happy to expose the mainstream audience to besides Guardians of the Galaxy we already know damn <laughs> um i got to think of all the well doctor strange is i i fucking love doctor strange even even if the movie was sort of weaker than some of the uh, Marvel movies. I don't know if you feel the same way about that. How did, how did you feel about Doctor Strange? How I feel about Doctor Strange, man? Uh, I, I I liked the first half of the movie. I, I liked the... Uh, I, I love the story, and I love the writing in the, in the movie, and, and what's her name? The, 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 the leader of the whole uh, organization. Uh, she's, she's an awesome, awesome actor. God, I, I don't remember her name right now, but uh, I really loved your character. I loved everything else. It was just that uh, Cumberbatch sort of. Uh, I almost think 
that they could have cast his role better, uh, ca- uh, cast Doctor Strange better. I, I I think he's a good actor, and I think he acted very yes. well, but I'm not convinced at it, and I, I don't see, he doesn't, I don't know, he doesn't come off to me as the correct guy to play Doctor Strange, though I don't know who else I would cast in his place. So I think he did go. a really great job being Doctor Strange. Like I, I sort of disagree with you pretty strongly. I think he was right, right. excellent. Well, I, I don't know. I, maybe it's just a, maybe I was expecting someone else. Maybe I, it just didn't jive with me very well. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really into the spiritual side of the MCU because that's when you get a lot of the cooler shit, like Doctor Strange. Like Ghost Rider, like Dormammu, and all of them, you know. Oh, Ghost Rider. Uh, okay, so maybe we won't talk about the Ghost Rider movies very much <laughs> because that was just schlock. Like Nicholas Cage should get kicked in his fucking nuts for that. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, you could have like any anyone could have been uh, made a better Johnny Blaze, but the the one that I'm afraid of them fucking up. Would be like, see, I I like the Johnny Blaze iteration of Ghost Rider just fine, but when I got into it, it was uh, the second iteration of Ghost Rider. A uh, uh, Johnny Blaze, I forgot who the guy, uh, the name of the character is, but I really loved his character a whole lot because we we get we get to find out that uh, Johnny Blaze gets kidnapped by. Uh, a cult that worships Zarathos, and Zarathos mm-hmm. is supposed to be this ancient, uh, uh, ale, uh, this uh, ancient demon, uh, like demigod or or something, and uh, uh, he he has amnesia and he has to find the the pieces of the pieces of the uh, amulet uh, that that are embedded inside Johnny Blaze. And the guy who uh, Johnny Blaze passed his uh, uh, Ghost Rider off onto, which is really cool though. Like usually, this is this is something that the Ghost Rider comics did really really well. Is they uh, they they passed off the the deity the uh, not the the demon not the deity. I was going I keep wanting to say deity when I mean demon. Mm-hmm. They passed off that that aspect off to the new Ghost Rider, but. They did something that no one else does because usually when you pass off the big thing, you lose the powers. But they let him keep some of the power. So he augmented his fucking double barrel shotgun to shoot freaking uh, hellfire in addition to the ammo or the, the stuff that he put in there. And it was like some of the coolest freaking fights and stuff because, you know, as you know, hellfire freaking... Burns much, much hotter than normal fire, and you can't put it out, kind of like napalm. And it has some crazy psychological, and it, hur- it harms your soul. So I always thought that was the coolest thing uh, about, like, the Ghost Rider aspect. But, uh, uh, Riley, what's a, what's a comic book that you've read that's turned into a movie that uh, has gone on to gain, uh, to, uh, to garner mainstream success that you're happy that had, or the happy they did that? Um, I mean, I think in most cases I saw the movie first. I even have read the right. comic book. Oh, okay, okay. Well, what what's a what's a standout movie in the MCU besides uh, Captain Marvel? Because we already discussed that. That that yeah, you've my, that Captain you Marvel really like. My favorite in the MCU. It's up there. It's I think it's second place. Oh, what what's but your number first, one? But my number one is what I'm about to talk about is Spider Man Homecoming. I still haven't seen either one of the Spider-Man movies yet, and I'm either off. one. I no, I just I, I I haven't seen Joker either, and I haven't seen Captain Marvel either. I haven't and, seen Joker, and I want to so bad. Uh, dude, I have it on fucking Plex, but I've been watching uh, Black Mirror, and I've gotten back into watching The Walking Dead, uh, because I okay. really really. I I know it's an endurance because like I can't I can't dedicate <laughs> so much time to a series and then get pissed off when it gets shitty because I gotta know what happens to Rick and now I'm on the the a tenth season as of last night 
And so I'm, 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 I'm waiting to see what happens in The Walking Dead. And the last few episodes that I watched have been pretty damn good. And, and I, I really have you like... Read the comics? Oh, I love so the comics. We're I actually... Talking about comics. Well, I actually have the comics. I have Compendiums 1, 2, and I believe 3. Mm. And uh, it's it's one of my favorite comic book series, The Walking Dead is. And that's a that that's a show, like, I know it's not MCU, but that's that's a comic that sort of came out of nowhere because it's done in black and white. And kind of historically speaking, comics that aren't colorized, they just don't do well. I don't know why. It's just the nature of the beast, I suppose. Uh, but I'm Unless really they're from re- Japan and they're manga. Oh well, yeah, but that's anime. That that's a whole other subject. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's manga. Manga, not anime. Manga. <laughs> it's an anime <laughs> book, as Monkey Jones would put it. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking it! Yeah, we're we're gonna really flex our nerd and check ourselves. That's fucking awesome. I love that shit. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. To 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 wrap this up because I can talk about The Walking Dead for like an hour and a half. Uh, to wrap that up, um, I'm really happy that it's got the success that it's it, it's it's garnered. Uh, it's did a, it's you a read all of it? Show. Uh, I, I'm I don't think I'm current. I, I think I'm like some months behind. Well, it's done now. <laughs> the comic? Yeah, yeah, it's done. Oh. No, I, I didn't. I didn't know that at all. <laughs> yeah, they they concluded it. Oh, holy shit! The last time I was reading the comic, I was reading an interview from the creator, and uh, he was talking about, oh yeah, this 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 series can go on for years and years and years after the show, because the show was starting it was has deviated pretty heavily from the yeah. comic, like you know. Pretty damn hell. Like, I wouldn't say that it was, like, great from start to finish, but... Oh, wow. So that's... I guess I'm reading The Walking Dead after I'm done I've here never, after dinner. Well, the big the deviation movie. was when... Um, sp- spoilers for, like, the early Walking Dead was, was Sophia. That was, like, when it yeah. all got fucked. When... Because... Uh, the the actress that played Sophia, her mother didn't realize how graphic the show would be, so she pulled her daughter from it, and that's why she like went missing for a while, and then ultimately died. Even though in the the comics she's alive, you know, in fucking Alexandria dating Carl. Like I thought she was at Hilltop. Well, I mean, yes, at at Hill, like she ends up at Hilltop, but you know what I oh, mean, okay. like in in yeah, that yeah, era, yeah. like in that arc, right, the Alexandria arc, and everything. Like she's she's alive. Yeah, th- I I thought that was really weird, and they uh, uh, they they did do the Psycho Kid thing, which I didn't think that they were ever gonna do because I thought that was a little bit too hot for TV, but like it, it turns out they gender bent like, it, and it was even creepier. <laughs> Ah oh, man, you know, I actually don't even remember. Oh wait, yeah, 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 because uh, in the comics it was two boys. Oh yeah, and, and Carl kills the boy because everyone else was too pussified to do what needed to be done. Because yeah. I hate to say, well, that that was a really cool thing about that comic is it did a really good job of explaining how morality works in a post apoc or a, a ongoing apocalypse wor- apocalyptic world. <laughs> Because that's the great thing. I, I hate it when people say that The Walking Dead's post-apocalyptic. It's like, no, no, no. The apocalypse is ongoing. <laughs> and it's going to do it until humanity is fucking, well, ceases to be. Because in that comic... Or cure the cure the disease, I guess. But Yeah, cure the disease. Uh, but uh, Spoilers, uh, that doesn't fucking happen. <laughs> well, that'll, yeah, of course that'll never happen. They, they'll never get the cure. Even even it, though the comics are over, they they haven't cured the disease, right? Like it's just over. Like, <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we're done with the Walking Dead. Let's get back to the MCU. It's comics. <laughs> it's I was adjacent. gonna say something about the Walking Dead. Well, Go dude, for are, it. Are you gonna say something about the Walking Dead, Riley? Do you want to say something about the Walking Dead? Get your hot take on the Walking Dead. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Get you, uh, give us your hot stakes, Riley. Hot hot stakes. Um. I've never actually like watched episodes of The Walking Dead, but I think 
like for like two seasons around the time that Negan dude was introduced. I was like watching clips on YouTube and mm-hmm. sort of following what was going on. And the big shock to me, because I had like some sort of knowledge of The Walking Dead. The big shock to me is I think you're you'd be past this point, Mo. You're at like you aren't you at current for Walking Dead? Well I'm on season ten right season ten episode one right now. Past Negan, yes. Yeah, like we're far past Negan. Yeah. Like Negan's gone. Oh well, no, uh, Negan Negan is uh arrested. In jail, right? Yeah. Right, he's in jail yeah. right now. Okay. okay. Well I don't know what season number this is, so I'm just begging. It's early Negan, I'm... you're probably fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably it's fine. I think it's like mid Negan? I don't know. Hey, hey well, go um, ahead. That um the kid dies. What the fuck is his name again? Rick's kid? Oh, Carl. Yeah. yeah. That shocked me. That fucking yeah. shocked me too. Like, holy shit, they killed the kid? The I main the character be, like, of the, the walking dead. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> yeah. And and the big reason for that is it's all behind the scenes fucking drama. Like AMC apparently uh doesn't pay their actors worth a shit. Like they don't pay them what they're fucking uh, uh, meant to be paid, because if any other network, if this, if The Walking Dead were say on CBS, kind of like Saban did with Power Rangers, womp womp. Ouch. Yeah, <laughs> but like, dude, if The Walking Dead were on a network like ABC or NBC or even fucking HBO, those guys would be like, like beyond multi multi. They, they would be Hollywood actor rich. And they deserve that, but right now they're 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 not getting paid what they're worth, and AMC is like has been terrible. Is the show still going? The, the show's still going, as far as I know. Yeah. Jesus. But yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're still making those two or the couple Rick movies or whatever. Oh, they're making movies. Yeah, they're making three movies or something. Fucking why? Just just one movie would be fine. We don't need three. It's because of Andrew Rick Lincoln's Tracy. contract or something. That's weird. But yeah, a, a lot of the a lot of the main actor. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and get to the point. Um, Carl, the guy who plays Carl, uh, he he felt like he was in a really oppressive atmosphere. He didn't love being on the show anymore. Uh. Uh, he he was wanting he was wanting to go to college and be a kid because if you think about it, Carl literally grew up on screen. Yes, and and God only knows, like, Lord knows he probably doesn't want to end up like that kid from Two and a Half Men, who was oh, just God, who basically what I I to think Angus T. Jones. I thought he was fine. Oh well, he might be fine now, but for for a while. On Two and a Half Men, he was uh, allegedly dropping acid, doing drugs. Uh, Hell fucking do- yeah. Do- doing the Charlie Sheen <laughs> thing. And, you know, I, 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 it's not like I would <laughs> fucking hate that. He looked up to his uncle. He took after him. Oh, oh yeah, big time, big time, big time. Uncle and, Charlie. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but, like, after a while, he, like, he blamed the show. He got off the drugs, start, stopped banging loose women. And, uh... Converted to Christianity and blamed yeah, the show and, he was and like Charlie a super Sheen. Hardcore Christian now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like Kirk Cameron from fucking Family Ties or uh, 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 uh mid eighties network. Uh, do you um? Show, whichever do you remember the actress uh, who played Beth in The Walking Dead? Did you hear about this the the story with her? Beth, 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 Beth. Oh, you know one of Herschel's kids. Oh, oh, you, you mean the redneck one? The one that, uh, bangs, No, not uh, Maggie. The one that's not in the comics, the blonde. Oh, the, the, the blonde chick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I remember her the, now. So the story with, like, the actress was that, um, or I think it was with her, or it, if it wasn't with her, it was for some other actor on The Walking Dead or actress. Um, she, uh, had just moved, like, she bought a fucking house in Atlanta to be near the, like, the filming location because they don't tell the characters when they're, they're, time is up right so she had just bought property there and they killed her character off oh, 
Yeah. yeah that sucks. <laughs> that's that's rough. Like that's you what like I'm sure she brought that up to like the the you know production and directors and they just like hey were guys, like I yeah uh uh-huh. huh now I live near the production site and I can probably, do more stuff probably like I'm going to buy a house and they're like yeah go for yeah uh huh and then like secretly they're like oh but we can't tell her because we got to keep it all secret that we're gonna kill her off oh that's so fucked. I mean, I hated it in the end. Like, if you were a good quarterback or a running back in the NFL, there's like plenty of stories in the '80s and '90s of of like a a, a pro ball NFL player buying a house because they got traded to a team. They're like, I'm going to stay here presumably forever, and then like the next season, they're fucking traded. I like, dude, that's got to really fuck up your life hardcore, man. It's different when you're a character like Glenn, where you're like, I know when I'm going to die, right? Like, yeah. Who, like, he had read the comics, and he's like, I know when I'm going to die. But Beth was never in the comics, so Beth was like, same thing with, like, Daryl, right? Like, they're in limbo. You don't know when their time is up. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, uh, Daryl, his brother, and the, there's so well, many Well, Merle people. is in the comics. Oh, was Merle in the comics? Yes, I, I, I guess believe. I just don't remember. Yeah, he's a he's a great actor. He's the one that plays uh, uh oh fucking what's his name, uh, uh the blue guy, in uh, oh Guardians. the collector. No, what's his he's, name? no, he he's the no that's Benicio del Toro, who's an oh. awesome actor. I, I'm talking about uh uh oh the the guy with the fin, the blue guy. He's a part of the Ravagers. Oh oh um, fuck, what's his name? He's a, yeah, yeah. That, that character's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's an awesome actor. Uh, uh, he One of his first movies was uh, was not Chasing Amy, but Mallrats. And he's the, he's the father of the, the lead love interest. And uh, uh, he's, a, he's a game show host that's trying to make it into the big time. And so mm-hmm. they, uh, they, well, you know what? I'm not going to talk about fucking Mallrats because I can talk about Kevin Smith stuff for like, Years and years and years. Hey guys, uh, remember twenty five minutes ago when I was about to talk about a uh, Spider Man Homecoming? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We started talking about The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, oops. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess I guess that's a good uh, segue back into the MCU. Uh, go ahead and give us your your hot take or the uh, your uh, your number one pick for best MCU movie. Best MCU movie, Spider-Man Homecoming. Literally, like, my second favorite movie of all time. I thought that was the first. I thought that Captain Marvel was your second favorite and Homecoming was Captain the first Marvel's favorite. third. And oh, then what's... first favorite. So, Captain Marvel's third. Spider- We've had this conversation on the MoCast. Captain Marvel's third, Spider-Man Homecoming second, and uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly's first. Oh, no, we're, we're talking about MCU, though. Oh yeah, uh, I said my I I I've said that it's my favorite MCU movie and my second favorite movie. Oh, oh okay. See, I I need fucking hearing aids because I guess I just <laughs> sort of spaced on that part. Okay, what is it that you love about uh, Spider Man Homecoming? It's just like Spider Man Homecoming is so good that it's literally made me a Spider Man fan. I straight up didn't like Spider-Man. I had Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi movie, on VHS as a kid, and I never really watched it because I had, like, other shit that I liked more, and I wasn't super into Spider-Man. I was too busy watching fucking Power Rangers and Digimon (laughs) to watch the Spider-Man movie. And uh, people were talking about the MCU and I hadn't seen a lot of MCU movies at that point. Like, I still haven't seen a lot of them, admittedly. But I'm like, I'll go I'll go see the Spider-Man movie. Why not? Why not? And I fucking loved it. Just the character of Peter Parker, the way it's portrayed by Tom Holland is just such, like, a charming character that I want to watch. Tom Holland's really a good enjoyed... fucking actor. I like him. Yeah, I, I just really enjoyed... Tom Holland is a character. I enjoyed the movie in general. Just the writing was good. Everything about it was really good. Unfortunately, I don't think Far From Home lived up to the hype. I watched Far From Home, and I'm like, this is a 
it's still like the th- one of the best Spider-Man movies as far as I'm concerned. I, I mean, it's the worst out of the three I've seen, but I uh, haven't. S- but perhaps some of them are better or worse. <laughs> the only three we- I've seen are are Homecoming, Far From Home, and the original Raimi movie. I've been really looking and forward I- to to watching Far From Home just because I've been uh, anticipating Mysterio. Uh, to be in the uh, to be introduced into the Spider Verse for like a couple of freaking decades now, and we've never I mean, he's my gotten part him. Of the movie. Yeah, and the, the, my part of the, movie. the guy the guy who plays him, he was in Donnie Darko. I forgot his uh, freaking name, but uh, he's a fantastic actor, and I really love the shit out of him. And Jake Gyllenhaal. I, Jake Gyllenhaal. Thank you. There we go. I know that name by heart now because Monkey adores the man and talks about him all the time. God damn. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think the thing that I, I love uh, about how the uh, how this uh, current crop of uh, Spider-Man movies is being made is that they, they really seem to figure out how to write uh, 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 Spider-Man for like a modern day audience. And uh, I, I really do appreciate that because it shows that they're actually paying attention to what they're doing. They're not dropping the ball like... I think they fucked up Amazing Spider-Man, and and I I, I really love the Amazing Spider-Man series. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I think it was more uh of uh, uh, I guess connected. I think it was, I thought it was connected better to the uh, old school comic. Uh, you know, because I was happy that we finally had a uh, Gwen, a uh, Gwen Stacy in there, and they actually did her death scene. Uh, justice because they never they they introduced her in number three and she's she's kind of a dumb sort of a dumb dumb and they didn't do her very they didn't do her character justice very well in the very first three spider-man movies but then again uh those first three spider-man movies at least in my opinion i think are fucking garbage (laughs) oh wow hot take hot takes yeah diggity yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I think uh, the the first three, like I thought, the first one was pretty okay. The second one I loved a lot, but the the, the thing that they do in those movies that pisses me off and that I I fucking hate it when comic book movies do this. They kill the bad guy off at the end of the movie, so you know we're, we're supposed to have Venom. Uh, the the guy Brock uh, uh, uh Brock Samson no not that that's fucking <laughs> that, that's fucking Venture Brothers uh uh fucking J- Brock Jameson uh J J J Jonah Jameson J- uh, his kid uh, turned out to be an astronaut and uh, he he brought the freaking Venom symbiote uh, back with him when they went back to the moon and Brock is supposed to be Venom. But you killed him off, so now we don't have any venom. Doctor Octopus is the one of the more famous freaking uh, antagonists of the in the Rogues Gallery of uh, the Spider Verse because he's the guy that defeats Spider Man for the first time, and uh, that was a huge, a uh, huge milestone in the comics because Spider Man finally figured out what his limitations really were and how even though he's in extremely intelligent how uh, and he's he essentially he's kind of like doc ock uh, he's he's extremely intelligent and has uh has a gift or or, or technology whatever you want to call it but then so does doctor octopus who has mostly who has a gift of extreme intelligence and some technology and uh he was he was just the better fighter. He was the better villain, and he got the best of them. And they fucking kill him off at the end of the movie, which I hated. And that they, they killed off the Green Goblin like way too soon. Willem Dafoe was a great Green Goblin, I thought. And uh, it's it's little stupid little things, uh, in in, in those movies that really ruined the whole experience for me. And, uh, yeah, but I, I thought the Amazing Spider-Man series w- was the better out of the two at the time. I, res- I, I Though I do love Tom Holland's Spider-Man character so far. 
He was the only decent thing about Civil War. The Civil War, I thought, is garbage, too. I've never seen Civil War. It was one of them that I wanted to watch, like, way back in the day, me and, like, way back in the day, me and my friend, not the friend I currently do one with, but way back in the day, me and another friend were doing a movie review show, and we wanted to do an MCU movie, and we're like, hey, let's do Civil War, and we were heart set on doing Civil War. Unfortunately, I was under the impression that it was on Netflix, but it was not on Netflix anymore at that point, so we did not end up doing Civil War. (laughs) I hate how uh, IPs and shit, or, or streaming rights, I should say, are, are, I hate the process of how they're bought and sold. Like, dude, can we just give them, like, a fucking permanent contract or something? You know, so like, what what was on Netflix five years ago should have remained on Netflix today. That way I can go watch whatever, that, that, that old movie uh, that I wanted to watch in Civil War, like, I can watch it like two or three times. I just, I just think it it was shitty, and it was you know they, they, I think they fucked up the Captain America Winter Soldier arc a little bit, and that that was that was arguably my favorite part of Civil War, and uh, yeah, well that that and uh, the fact that this is before Disney, before the mouse took over fucking everything. And so the Marvel Civil War is con- is confined to essentially like maybe a baker's dozen worth of characters, and uh, that sort of that that sort of uh, knocks the the fun or the I guess the totality of the Civil War uh, down like lots and lots of notches for me because the Civil War in the Marvel Comics universe it was literally. Everyone's every superpowered person versus every superpowered person. Everyone had an arc. Everyone had a purpose. Uh, lots. It, it, some, a lot of them were was just to just fucking die. You know. Thank you, Frank. Uh, uh not not Frank Castle. Uh, fucking Reed Richards. Damn you, Reed Richards, as Doctor Doom would say. Yeah, because Reed Richards. Uh, y- you find out. How much of an actual like, how he's so much closer to an actual villain than we actually think he is to a good guy, because if you really look at a lot of the catastrophes, at least in the comic Marvel universe, a lot of them can be can be directly linked to Reed Richards, and a lot of the worst fucking supervillains from alternate alternate timelines have been. Uh, a Reed Richards copy or the Reed Richards of that timeline, like there's a, uh, I, you know, I I don't think we have time for me to even go into uh, how how far how deep that rabbit hole goes. So I'll go ahead. And, we're at the hour mark, so let's go ahead and I guess wrap it up. So you think that the uh, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming that's your favorite Marvel movie, correct, Riley? Yep, yep, I love it. Uh, it's, all it's... right, nice, nice. All right, uh, Robin, what would you say is your favorite MCU movie? Robin. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, Mo, what's your favorite movie? All right, well, well, while we wait for Robin to reconnect, uh, my favorite Marvel movie, uh, it's kind of a fight between... Captain America Winter Soldier versus uh, Thor Ragnarok. And I can't decide which one I'd like more because I absolutely love the hell out of Thor Ragnarok. Like, it, that's what really started, like, uh, them and Guardians of the Galaxy, I guess, uh, it really, I guess, uh, uh, strokes the 80s nostalgia part of my brain really well. And so I, I like the, the aesthetic of it, I love the music and the tone and the look of it, and uh, uh, I think oh, Thor Ragnarok I think really pushed the uh, uh, Thor's boundaries a- as a character and as a hero and as uh, as an Asgardian. You are essentially and it was a great comedy. Yeah, and, and it was a great comedy too. Like it was, I didn't think that Thor uh, Thor content plus comedy 
would end up with a good movie because you don't really look at Thor and think, oh, wow, I can hear his tight five on a freaking stage. Like, no, nah, you're here to fucking watch him, like, just electrocute his fucking enemies. Well, and they pushed in the Planet Hulk, Hulk story, which is like, I love Planet Hulk so much. Oh, yeah, dude, I am so looking forward to when they finally kick off Planet Hulk. That's well, that was Planet be... Hulk. <laughs> oh, I, I thought they were doing a Planet Hulk uh, uh, separate uh, No, 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 they mixed it in with Ragnarok, which I thought was, oh. like, so good. Because that's the whole thing with Planet Hulk is, you know, him sending himself to space and then being a little broody bitch, just, just the Hulk. How have they oh, never okay. done a solo Hulk movie with fucking whatever the fuck his name is? With Mark Ruffalo? The, yeah, they only had the Ruffalo. Edward Norton one. So. Which is a little meh, but it has its moments, what I really... I liked Abomination. I thought he. I thought that was a really cool character. Yeah, it had the it, the actor who uh, the guy from Lie to Me. What's that dude's name? Uh, the dude from Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah, and the guy. He's he's the guy is dying, bleeding to death from a gut shot wound in Reservoir Dogs. I, I know exactly who you're talking about. By the way, if no one's ever seen Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction, you should totally go watch those. What are you a doing? A lot of <laughs> yeah. What what are you what are you doing with your life? Jesus. And I've go never watch seen either of those. Go watch Jackie Brown, too, which is my favorite out of the Tarantino films. But anyway, not talking about Tarantino. <laughs> I could talk about that for like three weeks straight. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I think Thor, Thor Ragnarok, is, well, I think, is the best of the Thor movies. And even though I, I kind of like Thor plus his, uh, his entourage, his Asgardian entourage. Mm -hmm. And it was a shame that we didn't get them uh, very much in Ragnarok. That we only got, like, we essentially, it was the Thor and Loki uh, freaking comedy hour, which which I fucking loved. You know, I absolutely, you know, because I, I love the dude who plays uh, Loki. And Loki's my, one of my favorite characters in the MCU. Always has been. I think he just plays the absolute best bad guy who has... Uh, who's working for a, a quote-unquote higher power, Thanos, for all those who aren't too privy to what I'm talking about. <coughs> or who haven't seen the fucking last Avengers movie, you know, the, the very first Avengers movie, with the end credits scene, just in case. But uh, yeah, 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 I, I thought that Thor Ragnarok and Winter Soldier, and this is the reason why I love Winter Soldier so much, because... You never thought that there would be a villain besides, like, some random agent of Hydra that would try to uh, try an, an assassination attempt on the head of fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. Because presumably that would be some lowby fucking nobody who's trying to rise up in the ranks of Hydra. And he would more than likely get his ass kicked. And, you know, he would just be soundly defeated by Samuel L. Jackson, a.k.a., you know... Uh, Oh, oh, fucking... Oh, come on, Mo. Are you fucking for real? Fury. Agent Fury. Oh, I, I spaced on his name for a second. I hate that shit. I'm not even fucking stoned that I hate when I spaced on shit when I say <laughs> some shit sober. That pisses me off immensely. But I need to eat some blueberries. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, fucking Agent Fury, uh, Nick Fury, is like one of the more intimidating characters in, in the MCU, I think. And I think Sam Jackson is probably like the best character, the best guy to ever play Nick Fury. I think he's he had that role uh, preordained uh, by by powers from up on high. I think that and uh, what's his name who plays fucking Thor and Loki too. But anyway, yeah. So you have the Winter Soldier who is this fucking brainwashed sort of Manchurian candidate esque uh, 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 fucking former friend of uh, Captain America, and he's been dead for, like, you know, 60, 70 freaking years since the old days. And so he comes roaring back with probably the coolest assassination attempt on the on a head of S.H.I.E.L.D. that I've ever seen. And he barely fails, but if you really look at it, I think his small failure there led to the ultimate victory by the end of the movie. Because by the end of the movie, instead of just destroying S.H.I.E.L.D. by killing the head of it, 
uh, he made the entire organization collapse. And then you find out, well, he, he didn't make the entire organization collapse. I think his actions led to the total collapse of the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. agency uh, because after it's found out that he's the Winter Soldier, all the HYDRA agents a activate and you find out how badly fucked S.H.I.E.L.D. really fucking was. Uh, but anyway, uh, Robin, w what's, your, what's your number one MCU movie? Hmm. Go down the list here. What you ain't about? My cat. <laughs> oh, the cat stick you? Yeah, he stuck me. I'm m messing with him and he stuck me with a claw. My brother's cat, Professor McGonkin, she, uh, whenever she it's wants the something. Best thing <laughs> Uh, it it was Professor McGonagall and Prof and uh, uh, Dumbledore, Professor Dumbledore, and uh, Dumbledore got hit by a car. So, free lesson, everyone: don't name your pets after dead uh, dead actors or <laughs> dead characters. You're you're asking for heartbreak. So I think my favorite MC the cat's movie name is Steve. would probably Steve? have to be Steve. It's. It's Guardians of the Galaxy, I think. But that's, yeah. it's tough. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, the first or second one? Uh, oh, that's also tough. Because I think the ending of uh, the second one... Is really if, good. Yeah, the, the, yeah well, because like the, the, the ending of the first one is absolutely great. But I, I think the, the tear-jerker ending... Tear -jerker ending uh, because uh, what's his name has a Ravager funeral after he was uh, summarily dismissed uh, uh, from the Ravagers as a whole, and then he was betrayed and all of his friends died, were murdered in front of him. Uh, you know, like uh, that. That was I thought that was a great end to his character. And Rocket Raccoon uh, had a great arc in that movie too. And I think it was it was that I, I didn't think it was that uh uh well done in the first one his arc but in the second one I think they picked up on that and uh, I think James Gunn knew what he was doing with uh specifically that character. Yeah, I think I think I like two more, and then also yeah. I want to bring up that a lot of people sleep on Ant Man. Ant Man's really good. <laughs> I fucking love Ant Man. I love Ant Man, Ant Man and the Wasp, and uh, what what was the? Uh, there was a couple of other ones that that don't have. Uh, well, uh, Doctor Strange, I think, uh, uh, would probably fit in this category of like uh, sort of like a second, sort of like a, a backup characters, like second string characters that mm -hmm. turned out. Although to he be, ends up being very important, and yeah. Ant Man less so, right? <laughs> Well, I well I don't know. Then again, I, I kind of I, I just love the Ant Man series anyway. I like all, everyone involved in that show. Because in Infinity I, War, Doctor Strange, you know, he goes through the fucking like five million possibilities or whatever, and realizes the only one in which everyone survives is the one where he dies, so that way Iron Man can eventually sacrifice himself. Right? Like that's the mm -hmm. the only out of like millions of of possible worlds that he thought of uh that's the only one where like they had a fighting chance yeah and it had they they had to let thanos win for a long time <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah uh fucking poor thor uh thor was the one that i i think thor kind of got it the worst out, out of all of them even though scarlet what about uh, the universe where thor gone for the head what about that universe well uh, apparently, uh, uh, Doctor Strange didn't see that one. In fact, it, it seems like a, every single universe but the one that was like a minuscule chance of even happening, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, that was like every single one uh, he goes for the chest instead of the head. That's because Thor gets angry and Thor doesn't think clearly when he's angry. He wouldn't like it when he's angry because he doesn't think tactically. And I just wanted to rip off a freaking uh, Hulk joke just so I could put that in there. <laughs> I also think people sleep on Age of Ultron. 
Uh, I didn't like Age of Ultron. I was really disappointed in it. I, I thought the there was just too much. Maybe comedy. I just like James Spader too much. James Spader is a fucking awesome actor, and I thought that his uh, his, his Ultron was great. The, the character was great, but the the, the one liners and the quips <laughs> it's just too much comedy. Like let's do the comedy this much small if we if we have the comedy in 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 Age of Ultron. I think it would have been a lot cooler. I think it would have been much, much better. But that's just me. Uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, let's see. I, I think at the end of the day, well, you know what? We'll, we'll end on this quick question. Which one do you think was better, Infinity War or uh, Endgame? Infinity War, 100%. Oh, uh, yeah. Riley, so you think Infinity War? All right, because I think Infinity War, too. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't Wait, like. Do you think any... Infinity War as well, or you think Infinity War Two, aka Avengers Endgame? Oh no, no. <laughs> I mean, I I agree with y'all. I thought Infinity War was far, far better than Endgame. I not not so. If you if you just dismiss the fact that you know these characters are coming back, it's it's not that bad. But well, and you, you kind of know like Robert Downey Jr.'s time's up, right? <laughs> like, well, yeah. It, I I think maybe maybe a lot of uh. A lot of stuff going into Endgame was a bit bittersweet because Endgame's pretty good. I just think that I I thought that uh Infinity War was so much more well done. Uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and wrap that up unless anyone else has anything else they'd like to say. Um, right. The MCU's good. The MCU's good. Watch MCU movies; they're good. <laughs> all right, all right, and go watch The Walking Dead because it's still pretty good. Though, then again, I, I haven't gotten to. One. I <laughs> haven't gotten to read the comic. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely read the comics. Go buy the compendiums. They're big fuck all, uh, fuck off books that are just thick as hell. It'll take you most of the day to read it, and it's time well spent. And it's uh, it's black and white comics. I I, I have sort of a soft spot for. Because I, I think that for the most part, if you have to, if you do a black and white comic, you have to do the artwork really, really well, or you have to be, you don't have to be exceptional, but at least make the quality look good. You know what I mean? Go I check always out. thought it was funny that there was a, there's an interview with, um, uh, what's his face? What's what's the name of the writer for The Walking Dead? Uh, Kurt something. Uh, yeah, 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 um, fuck, why am I blanking on it? Uh, Kirkman, Robert Kirkman. Oh, there we um, go, there we go, so yeah, I was yeah. fucking wrong. <laughs> I always, I always found this interview funny where someone asked him the question, like, what's, what's one, uh, like, thing that you've written in The Walking Dead that you regret? And he answers, like, thing. well, he says, like, I, I, there's nothing I, like, regret, like, I wouldn't write anything differently. But there's one thing that like annoys him a little bit, and that's spoiler alert for the Walking Dead comics. But he he says um, he he regrets uh, cutting Rick's hand off a little bit, or not regrets, but like he finds it annoying to write around because he'll he'll plan out the scene where like he's like, you know, Rick, you know, Rick uh, sits down and like opens a can of soup and then like starts eating and then goes, oh wait, Rick doesn't have a hand, so. Carl opens a can of soup for Rick while Rick watches sadly in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, poor Rick, dude! Like uh, he 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 really is like, you know my my I think he is my favorite character out of The Walking Dead. Even though Michonne is like a close number two, I, I thought the I thought the Michonne Rick ship, uh, fucking I I I kind of don't like it. And here's why, and this is going to be a controversial opinion here, but Rick holds Michonne back. Michonne should be the leader of Alexandria, not Rick, because Rick just, he's just well, not Rick's fucking just the sheriff. Well, well, yeah, but everyone looks at, at him for the leadership, though. And it's sort of like, you can say that it's thrusted upon him, but at the same time, if you remember... If you remember back in the old days when they were wanderers, uh, he said that this is a Rick Tater ship, and he's the man in charge. <laughs> so, 
Well, to be fair, that's because like Shane was in charge for a while, and you know Shane yeah, fucked and, his and, wife. And, so and Shane was a bastard. Yeah. You know, but anyway, my niece is screaming in the background, so let's go ahead and just uh, uh, wrap this niece. up. Yeah, hi, hi. Yeah, hi, Abby. How you doing? All right, so uh, Riley, where can they find you? What What's your stuff? What do you have to hawk? You can find me on Twitter at Riley Tweets. You can find me streaming at twitch.tv slash Riley Streams. I should be getting back to that soon because I had stopped for a little while because I upload all my stream archives to BitChute. And even 20-minute videos were taking, like, days to upload to BitChute. So I figured uploading hour streams probably wouldn't work out. But BitChute seems to be back to uploading fairly fast. So I should be able to go back to Twitch and re-upload my archives and be fine. I think what really pisses me off about BitChute right now is, like, a, just a couple of days ago, I got an email from them saying, your video is ready to be uploaded. And I, I looked at it, and it's like, it's the college humor video that I uploaded, and I, I swear that I think that was, like, a couple of weeks ago. And so it took forever for it to upload, and I'm starting to have doubts about the, uh, the capability of BitChute right now, because you have... You don't have this problem, the uploading problem, in any of the other platforms, from what I know, anyway. Not no, even wait, are you saying BitChute might fail? Well, I might have... Well, let's say maybe we do a, a YouTube Alternatives Part 2 episode one day, <laughs> where, I, where Mr. Mo admit Diggity wrong. admits that I'm wrong, and I sort of walk back some of my uh, comments about BitChute. I'm starting to get aggravated. I'm all like, in in BitChute, so I hope it doesn't fucking fail. I'm uploading like two videos a day on BitChute. Oh, I hope no. that it doesn't either. But like you know, there's no excuse for like the the two weeks of upload time for a ten minute video. That's fucking nuts for me. Anyway, uh, Robin, where can they find you? What do you have? Hey, I wasn't done plugging yet. You went on a BitChute rant. Oh, I thought you were done because you stopped. No. <laughs> okay, alright, alright, go ahead, go ahead Keep, keep on <laughs> You can find me on Pixels, Polygons, and Fun Wherever podcasts are found Pokemon Variety Hour on Stitcher and Spotify But most importantly The Riley Podcast Mega Feed Can be found on Stitcher and Spotify It's the new center For all of my independently produced podcasts Like the Riley and Movie Review Podcast And Largest Issue in the Galaxy Which recently returned so please go and listen and subscribe to the Riley Podcast Mega Feed. Well, one place you won't find Riley is on YouTube because, like you said, you quit YouTube, correct? I did quit YouTube and I went to BitChute, which you can find my BitChute as Pixels Media because it's with my, it's with the podcast network I do, Pixels Probably Got the Fun and Pokemon Variety Hour with, so the channel is Pixels Media. And of course, all links will be in the description as well. All right, Robin, or, or I'm sorry, Riley, uh, is that it? All right, Robin, your go. All right, you can find me on Twitter, at Insight Alloy. You can also find me on Twitch, where I stream sometimes, uh, at twitch.tv slash Insight Alloy. So that's it. That's my that's my hawk. All right, good. I don't and have course... much. I don't have three million uh, platforms. <laughs> what is that, shot? You got something to say? You got something to say, Robin, huh? Yeah. No, I don't. I, it's nothing for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can find me at twitch.tv slash modiggity, uh, YouTube forward slash C forward slash modiggity42, fadegrips.store, uh, fadegrips.store, put promo code modiggity into the promo code box, save 50% of your total purchase. And uh, happy good boy 420 on Twitter, and modiggity42 on Instagram. So, anyway, I believe that wraps up the show. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I appreciate y'all coming out. And until next time, that's all. Bye.